Thank you. Thank you, Heiner, very, very, very much for your warm words or welcome. I may be at uh, one point which is uh, quite old or uh, early from the political uh, career you mentioned. Uh, I started in the, Europe in the Slovak parliament as co-chairman of Slovak-British, or then it was Czechoslovak-British parliamentary friendship group. So I come gladly to this country, to this city, although there was a velvet divorce uh, called Brexit. <laughs> Decision should be respected, but uh, we hope to still find a lot in common for future. And I'm here especially, <clears throat> and that's the point to share with you, <clears throat> because I, I pay tribute to those who are and can be labeled as peace builders, peace defenders. It's very important. And uh, I wish you a lot of fruits of this effort. The UPF is a great uh, entity wherever and whenever I thank you. Met people from, uh, from uh, UPF. Uh, it was even uh, for me inspiring and uh, uh, invitation to network. Uh, road to success in, in international relations is called or combination of hard working, team working, and networking. But the order is important. Hard working, then team working, and then networking. Um, I, I have a, a messages for you, but before, I would like to share one and then at the end, the last one. <clears throat> you do, know, do you know why, why evil has uh, so much uh, fruits in, in the world of today. We see how crisis of various uh, qualities and quantities is growing. We have war on the continent and on, on continents, even genocidal killings, uh, inflation, uh, deficits of energy, uh, a lot of um, troubles, problems. Uh, evil is successful because, because it has many influential allies. And three of them are probably the most influential. They are omnipresent in our countries, in your, in mine. And uh, they are so simple, it's important to remember. It's indifference if we don't care because it's far away, it's not us, it's somebody. It's ignorance if we don't know, if we don't understand what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on in Ukraine. And the third one is fear. If we are afraid to raise voice or to do something in defense of the defenseless or voiceless. So uh, remember, indifference, ignorance, and fear are allies of evil. We should work against these siblings by engagement, active citizenship. We are here and we can do something, everybody. We should learn lifelong, understand the world, the humanity, human person, self. And then courage, simple human courage, which, which is a base of action, of resistance, fight for freedom. So I, I wish you this, uh, not only knowledge about siblings, but action against those siblings who, who make so much evil around. Uh, the, the topic of this panel is very important, I think, because as the prayer room in Geneva, there can be a difference achieved on the top levels. I was first ever EU Special Envoy for Freedom of Religion or Belief. It was not, you know, invented by occasion. There was a genocide of Yazidis, Christians, Shia Muslims, and, and many small uh, minorities in the Middle East by ISIS troops. And it awakened 
those who had power to do something, and I tried to persuade those European leaders to do something for religious freedom as the basic fundamental uh, uh, criteria, civilizational freedom. And somehow, as a boomerang, it came back to me as an invitation to start something unprecedented. So it's possible to change administrations or governments or bureaucracy into action for, for peace, for humanity, for human dignity. I want to say that um, those societies where faith and reason or religion and science cooperate, work together in autonomy, but also in, uh, in cooperation for common good, for justice, for human dignity, we see advancement, we see progress, human progress, very important for all. In those societies where reason and faith are in conflict, something is wrong. Usually religion is abused or may be abused. Those who do not understand religion and especially abuse of religion cannot understand what is going on in the world of today. And if we don't understand, how can we heal? How can we help? It's a principle, it's an invitation to understand, to know, to learn. So <clears throat> reason and faith are like two motors moving societies forward. Forward to what? Towards uh, dialogue, peace, common good. Uh, if the criterion of action is truth and human dignity for all. Or forward towards conflict and war if the aim is dominance, imperial ambitions, or superiority. Instrument for the second objective is our lies, propaganda, ideology, warfare, but not the truth, not human dignity for all. I mention human dignity because it's one of the most important principles for today's and tomorrow's world, if we understand it correctly. It's foundational principle of human rights. As we spoke with Jacques and others at the lunch, we love human rights, we want more. But human rights are possible only with human duties, like freedom with responsibility, two sides of the same coin. When you read 30 articles of the UDHR, there are many rights. But there are very implicit but important, crucially important, two duties, Article 1 and Article 29. One speaks about duty to behave in the spirit of brotherhood. It's not a religious language, but secular language of the UN Declaration and the UN Convention on Civil and uh, Political Rights. And 29 speaks on duty towards community which we live in, and this is family, this is my village or city, and this is my nation, my country. So please remember this because uh, without that we are without balance. And without balance means life in crisis. For getting out of crisis we need to renew balance in climate, in relations, in culture, in mentality. So human dignity must be departure point, respect of dignity of anybody, of all, the objective, promotion of dignity of all, and criterion to get from A to B. So triple role of one dignity. Pew Research Center in Washington uh, speaks about very important data. 84%, and it's reliable, it's the most professional uh, survey. 84% of global population claim uh, religious affiliation. So this is not majority. It's overwhelming majority, 84%. This is not half and half. And the number is growing. So those who disregard, disrespect religious identity, disregard persuasion, belief of the overwhelming majority of the world and it must be detrimental in, in that case. 
overwhelming majority of the world population uh, is, uh, is claiming the importance of religion. And the UN is here to serve the, the world population, to all people, people with their diverse identities and justified rights. Second, peace is fruit of justice. And justice uh, for all is today measured or spoken by uh, through, through human rights. Modern understanding of justice is through human rights. And the core of human rights is religious freedom. It's Article 18 out of 30. It's in the center. And why it is so central? Because this is the deepest expression of human freedom. It's freedom of thought, freedom of conscience, freedom to believe or not to believe or to change. Then we have other freedoms which are consecutive. Freedom of assembly, freedom of association, freedom of speech, of opinion. It starts with head and heart. And therefore, those who respect the deepest expression of human freedom respect also implications of this freedom. Those who do not respect, like communists, Marxists, Stalinists, they will disregard all other duties. Therefore, religious freedom is litmus test of human rights. And therefore, those who want peace should fight for religious freedom for all. Not just for majority, for some, but for all. And um, religious freedom is uh, under, under very uh, visible pressure. Because according to Pew Research Center, 79% of global population live in countries with high or very high uh, obstacles, restrictions to religious freedom. So again, majority of the world doesn't have, doesn't possess, enjoy uh, that freedom as United Kingdom, for example. And that's the problem, civilizational problem. We have to know it and we need to do something. Because, again, it is important for believers and non-believers, for people from A to Z, and here I mean atheists or Zoroastrians, for all, not just for some, for all. And I say it as men who lived under communism. And um, I think that uh, a lot can be done. When I was nominated to the position of EU Special Envoy, then in, it was in May 2016, then many countries followed this example, including United Kingdom. There is now special envoy of Prime Minister for religious freedom, freedom of religion or belief. It was Denmark, it was Germany, uh, Netherlands, Hungary, Poland, uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Estonia, Lithuania, and many. So there is power of example, power of his inspiration, and UPF should act and think this way. It's not a problem if we are in minority on some issues, but we must be creative minority. Creative minorities change the history. Third, Forbes is under growing pressure, as I said, 79% restrictions, and these restrictions might mean in reality social hostilities, terrorism, or even governmental uh, uh, restrictions or policies. It can be uh, defined by four layers, uh, uh, intolerance, um, a discrimination, persecution, and the worst but real uh, issue of our times is again genocide. This is the liquidation of the others because they are different. They are others by religion, by ethnicity, or, or conviction. So actually, it reminds me at least, but I think we share this view, a situation with, uh, with climate. Situation is very bad and it's worsening. So we need action. And religious freedom or persecution is connected with millions of people. So I'm not speaking about few or some, millions in the world. And therefore we need religious freedom, climate change. 
to stop the tendency and to revert it. And therefore, such committee or alliance on the level of United Nations would be very important for the 21st century and peace in the world. Freedom without responsibility is not sustainable. It will cease to exist, as I said. Rights without duties represent one-sided coin. Whenever we speak about okay, or demand freedom, we should dwell on responsibility. This was my principal attitude to religious leaders when I met them. Um, how to establish this? One stream of action is inter-religious uh, um, freedom, uh, international religious freedom global movement, which means to get uh, into motion those who are like-minded on the level of governments, parliaments, civil society, and faith-based organizations. It is possible, it is even moving, I have also good news, since 2014 there is International Parliamentarians Platform for FORP, for Freedom of Religion or Belief. Since 2018 there are annual International Religious Freedom Ministerial Conferences. The last one was here in July in, in London, more than 60 countries present. Since 2020, there is International Religious Freedom and Belief Alliance, almost 40 countries uh, working together uh, since two years. And uh, since 2021, there is International Religious Freedom Summit. It was organized last year and this year in June in Washington, D.C. So it's time to make voices and actions of the Facebook organizations more influential. And the other stream, and I end here, uh, we need as well the, 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 the patient, the sustainable effort. We need a special purpose action committee with its expertise and trust and with mandate to speak to decisive authorities. On one, one side, these are major global religions. On the other, important state and UN representatives. Idea should be explicitly supported by religious authorities. Equally, by the newly established uh, Alliance uh, on Religious Freedom and International Religious Freedom Summits uh, and Parliamentarian uh, uh, Platform. Broadly pre-consulted initiative and thoroughly drafted text of the UN resolution must be tabled to the UN General Assembly by several active and committed governments. And my postscriptum is invitation to support, yes, it's there, uh, initiative which, uh, which was adopted in 2018. It's open for signatures. It's about human dignity for everyone everywhere. As I said, uh, we claim a lot of rights, but we tend to forget duties. And this initiative is kind of renewal and recommitment to the UDHR globally in order to, to reunite around important principles for peaceful coexistence in 21st century. 21st century may and can be more humane if we stick to human dignity for all. You are cordially invited to join. There is a link to, to not only read, but also co-sign with hundreds of signatories. Thank you very much. Sorry for long. Time.